Today, we're going to speak about Rachel, beloved and remembered. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 29 from verses 9 through 12. While he was still talking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherd. When Jacob saw Rachel's, Rachel, daughter of his uncle Laban, and Laban's sheep, he went over and rolled the stone away from the mouth of the well and watered his uncle's sheep. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and began to weep aloud. He had told Rachel that he was a relative of her father and a son of Rebekah. So she ran and told her father. We see here in this passage that I just finished reading that this is the first time that Jacob meets uh, Rachel. <clears throat> One thing that we know is that yesterday we spoke about Leah and Leah and Rachel are sisters, but Jacob actually meets Rachel first and he falls madly in love with her right at the first time. Inside of Rachel's story, there are three truths that today I want to share with you that I think are so, so beautiful. Number one, the first thing that you have to know is that you were bought with the price. You were bought with the price. See, Jacob fell in love with her immediately. And one thing that we know about their story is that he paid the bride price for her. And even when his uh, father-in-law Laban went and cheated him, and if I, I want to share a little bit of what happened at the night of the wedding, the Bible says that there was a great big feast and that, you know, they celebrated uh, Rachel and Jacob getting married. But it, when it was time to consummate their marriage, the Bible says that Laban had made sure that Jacob was extremely drunk. And when it was time to go into his tent, instead of sending Rachel, Rachel, in order to consummate the marriage, he sent Leah instead. Um, and one of the verses that he says is because it is not customary to marry off the younger one before the older one gets married. And he kind of tricked him and he tricked him knowing that, you know, unfortunately, like we said yesterday, Leah was not seen as beautiful, but God also had so many blessings for her. But one thing that I want you to know is that as we're studying Rachel today, I want you to see this picture of us, the church, and, and the relationship of Christ. So even though he cheated, her father-in-law cheated, his father-in-law cheated him out of it, uh, uh, Jacob still decided to work another seven years um, for Leah and he ended, for Rachel, sorry, and he ended up receiving Rachel uh, for seven years of work. And this is such a picture of Christ and the church. See, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20 says, you were bought at a price and therefore glorify God with your body. Whenever the enemy tries to tell you that you're not good enough, I want you to tell them I am valuable and I was bought with a price. See, Jacob loved Rachel so much that it did not matter that he had to work extra in his father-in-law's house, but he wanted to ensure that they all knew that she was worth it. Rachel was worth the seven extra years. See, there's going to be people in your life that do not understand the favor of God over your life. They can't understand why you're always chosen. They're not going to understand the love that the Father has for us. See, Christ loved us so much that he did not care that he had to give up his body and shed his blood on a cross for us because he knew that you were worth it. If you're feeling and if you're in a season when you're feeling uh, these feelings of unworthiness or you're feeling like you're not worthy or lovable you have to know i want to remind you that you were bought with a price and one thing about being bought with a price the bible says that that price is a high price and valuable so the next time that you allow people in your life to tell you that you not you are not valuable or the next time that you allow patterns of behaviors in your life for what by what you do not only by what you do by but by what you allow people around you to treat you i want you to remind yourself how valuable you are right and there's a lot of women that are watching this and I know that there are men too but one thing is that there are women that they love especially women in, in church circles I see it so much is that they covet uh the the Louis bag right they're like oh my god I'm saving money for the Louis bag see you're not gonna when you get your Louis bag you're not gonna go ahead and throw in a, a half uh open mascara into the inside of that Louis bag you're not gonna some women won't even put it on the floor they get the little 
little hook to make sure that they, it's always placed properly and they're not going to let anything get on it. If you have some red bottoms, anything that you have a valuable in the natural, you always take care of it more because you're like, I worked hard for that, right? I worked, I spent my money on that. I saved on that. I'm going to take care of that. The same way it is with Christ and Christ, when he tells us that he loves us, he's looking at us like, you know, I, I want you to take care of yourself and take better care of yourself because you were bought with a price. So I want you to know you were bought with a price. Number two, I want you to understand is that you are loved and remembered. You are loved and remembered. See, as Rachel and Leah's story continues to kind of interweave within the biblical pages, one thing that we noticed is that the Bible says that when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened up her womb, um, but Leah, Rachel remained barren. And the Bible says that as Leah started uh, producing more children, and she was producing children in the hopes that her husband would love her unfortunately her husband never got to love her and we spoke about that the effects of rejection yesterday but I want you to understand that you are loved and you are remembered right uh, so he still loved her irregardless of the fact that she could not produce. Even when she couldn't produce children, we know even by the arguments that they have, the very few arguments that the Bible uh, records, the arguments that Leah and Rachel have are because Leah wants more time with her husband, the time that Jacob is giving to the wife that he loves. I want you to understand that the father loves you so much, that Jesus loves you so much, that it doesn't matter or anyone else that he wants to spend time with you. He wants to spend one-on-one -on -one time with you. He wants the intimacy with you. Even if you feel like, Lord, but I'm not producing anything at this moment. I'm not valuable enough. I'm not producing anything in the natural. I'm in my barren season. God is saying, that doesn't matter to me. I want to spend intimate moments with you because of the love that I have for you. There is something about you that I fell in love with from the moment that I first laid eyes on you. And that wasn't when you were born. That wasn't when you were already mature. No, that was when you were a spoken word in the heavens. That was when he already fell in love with you. See, one thing that we have to realize is that the name Rachel means you. Uh, uh, you or a person with purity. And you're like, what is a you? Not the letter you. E-W-E. You, which is a female sheep. And I keep saying how Rachel is, is symbolism of the church. See, one thing that we have to notice is that there are many things in the Old Testament that are kind of like a typology or they're a symbolism for something. And Rachel here, she's a symbol of our interaction with the, of the church and our relationship with Jesus Christ with us. See, it's isn't it crazy that he bought her when her name means female sheep? John chapter 10 verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, right? He buys us with the price and that price was laying down his life for us. He's saying, you're so valuable that I put everything that I had into making sure that you were mine, right? The Bible also says that, you know, my sheep hear my voice and they know that I am theirs and they are mine. One thing about Jacob and Rachel's relationship was that even though she wasn't producing anything in the natural, their relationship was so in sync was that they knew each other. They were one with each other. God is telling you, it doesn't matter what you're going through. You are still loved and you're going to be remembered. Years and years after the Bible says that after so many years in the frustration because we see that Leah became, Rachel became jealous at the fact that Leah was producing so many children and she would fight with Jacob and say, you know, this is your fault. Sometimes we go through these seasons where we're seeing other people, where we're seeing the wicked, people that don't have a relationship with God produce so many things and that they're being able, they're not in a barren season and they seem like everything is going fine and we begin to blame the Lord and you're like, Lord, is it because you don't love me enough? Is it because I'm not worthy enough and don't allow that because that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants to make you feel as if the position that you have in Christ Jesus is uh, is movable and God has told us time and time again that his posi our position in him and the love that he has for us, no one will be able to separate us, right? Romans says, no one, who shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Nor heaven, nor hell, nor angels, nor the depth, nor anything that I 
I go through will be able to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Did you know that during this time and this season in which Leah, Rachel, and Jacob lived, uh, her being able to produce children was very essential to who she was as a woman within her society and the respect that she would receive. The more children a woman produced during that time, the more respect she had within her community and usually the more love her husband had for her. But here we're seeing the opposite, that that uh, Jacob is saying, even if you don't produce anything, I still love you. Even if you're in your barren season, I still love you. Even if you're struggling, I still love you. Even if you're going through jealousy, I still love you. And I feel like that word is for someone that feels like they're in this barren season, that they're in the season that they are stuck, that they're in the season that they're not producing anything and they're getting frustrated at the success of everyone around them. But I want you to know that you are still loved. And eventually God is going to get to the point where he hears your cry in the Bible. Bible says, and the Lord remembered Rachel. The Lord remembered Rachel. See, one thing about God is that he never uh, stays with, with what is ours. And nunca se queda con lo de nosotros, right? He never stays with what is ours. He never takes advantage and says, you know what? I'm going to retain that blessing. He is not an Indian giver, right? What we call an Indian giver. Someone who gives the gifts and then takes it, strips it away from us. That is not who God is. And the Bible says that he remembered her and she was able to have a baby right he was able to have a baby and and we have to understand that there's gonna come a time where the Lord remembers you and he's gonna remember the blessings that he has for you and the promises that he has for you all you have to do is wait but in your waiting season I want you to understand that you are loved you are more than loved and number three the third thing I want you to know is that what you produce is unlike anyone else what you produce is unlike anyone else see one thing is that Leah produced all these sons and the the their, the names of the sons carried the meat these powerful meanings but in reality after she named them she kept putting this this charge and this unnecessary strain and trauma secondary trauma on them of I hope my husband loves me because of you right I hope my someone loves me and I'm accepted because of you and we can't expect for God and people to accept us because of what we bring to the table we have this new thing now that's the fashion now we see it all on TikTok and single couples are talking about it of like what do you bring to the table and my husband and I always talk about this of like you know if I if my husband would have asked me like what do I bring to the table I would have told him honey I am the table do you know who I am do you know who it is that God called me to be I am the table so ladies this is just a little tidbit if you are single and you're waiting for someone and that person tells you what do you bring to the table you have to know who you are who your identity is in God don't let anyone else define who you are but what you have to understand is that what you produce is unlike anyone else. While Leah produced all these sons in hope that her husband would love her, Rachel produced two sons and these two sons were incredible. Number one, the first son that she produced was Joseph. What you produce is unlike anyone else because what you produce is prophetic. See, one thing about Joseph was that even though he was the beloved son and he was a favorite son, he had a coat of many colors, he had one thing that his brothers did not have and is that he was prophetic. Sometimes we have to wait and in the waiting game, what we don't realize is that God is polishing us because what we're getting ready to produce is something prophetic and God wants to make sure that no one else can put a stain on what is prophetic because what is prophetic comes straight from the throne of God and God doesn't want anyone else to usurp it. God doesn't want anyone else to stain it. God doesn't want anyone else to corrupt what comes straight from the throne of God. And number two, the second son that she produced uh, his name was Benjamin, son of my right hand. One thing about Benjamin is that his name is Benjamin, son of my right hand. But in reality, he was a, a lefty, right? He was unlike anyone else. And this is the first time that we're seeing a lefty uh, being brought up in society. And many people, many theologians believe that Benjamin was the first lefty. That is why he is called the father of lefties. The Benjamites, they were known all to be left-handed 
people. And even now till today, people are still studying how the brain works with left-handed people because we know that they are completely different. See, what God wants to produce in you is going to be different from what everyone else. It's not going to be like anyone else. It's not going to be a photocopy. It's not going to be a copy and paste. God is saying it is going to be completely original and God will know because it will have the stamp that it comes directly from the throne of God. So today I want you to see through the story of Rachel. I want you to see yourself as the church when you read her story. You have to understand that number one, you were bought with a price. You were bought with a high price. It is high time that we stop allowing people to mistreat us and not only people, that we stop mistreating ourselves. 2023 has to be the year that we say, I'm breaking up with the mistreatment that I do to myself mentally, physically, emotionally. And I make sure that I realize that my body, my brain, every part of me is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And I need to understand that I was bought with the price and that price is valuable. Number two, you have to understand that you are loved and remembered, irregardless of how the world is treating you baby you are loved and God at his given time will remember you and number three what you produce is unlike anyone else what you produce is going to be prophetic and what you produce no one else has ever seen it before there's not going to be a carbon copy of it so this is today's class and God bless you